no, no. I'm happy to do it, man. This is like charity work for me. Oh, charity work. Okay, well, I mean, hey, we're happy to have you here. We always appreciate when you help us out, Gordon. And uh, this cool glasses, like uh, you're a Top Gun pilot or you something? Know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I was actually a camera operator on Top Gun, which is crazy. Cause really? I could, like, fly jets and film at the same time, which is like really difficult for most people. But, you know, I was flying so good that Tom Cruise was getting a little bit jelly. Oh, so they okay. actually like, you know, moved me off the shoot. But then... You know, the Navy was like, why don't you just join the actual Top Gun? You're that impressive. And oh, yeah. it turns out, like, my body can withstand, like, four more Gs, like, 13 Gs, the normal human body. 13 Gs, like, because I think, like, top pilots can only take nine, and they yeah, pass no, out Yeah, no, they've said it's basically like, superhuman. Right. No, 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 what the hey, fuck Jordan. is he doing oh, hey, here? Jordan. I said, no more oh, working with Gordon. Don't be like that, okay? I, this is going to be fun for me. Help you out with your little YouTube channel. It'll be like teaching filmmaking to kindergartners. It's very rewarding for me. Okay, Jordan, I know you're upset. I'm I know. very okay, upset. Okay, but you're, you know how much your wife loves Gordon. You guys are twin brothers. She just thinks it's the new year. It's time to bury the hatchet. Like, just... I don't just want try. to. I, I, I know, I know. I think it's really cool that you're wearing the same jacket you've been wearing for, what, like 12 uh, years? Look, you can make fun of it all you want. This was a gift from my wife. Oh, I like her. I know her. You know what? You guys, you guys have fun. I'm out. So, Jordan, Go make a YouTube video together. I don't give a shit. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It is I, Gordon Drake, to talk about the Canon R5C. And you might be wondering, hey, that camera came out almost a year ago now. Why did it take so long to get a review on this channel? It's because they were waiting for someone competent. It is a cinema camera. They needed a proper cinematographer, and that's me. You might be wondering why I'm not holding the camera right now. Well, that's because Chris Nichols is filming me on it right now. He's one of my biggest fans next to, of course, Jordan's wife, Evelyn, that's really kind of beside the point. So let's talk about this camera. So what makes the R5C so compelling? Well, I think the biggest deal is that this is a camera that actually has two completely different operating systems based on the mode that you're in. So on top of the camera, you can see there's a photo and a video setting on the power switch. If you set it to the photo mode, you're getting the exact same interface menus as a Canon R5. But if you set it to the video setting, then you're getting the professional video interface that we've seen in all of Canon's cinema cameras. Totally different menus, even all the buttons do something completely different. And I think this makes a ton of sense. The real drawback though is there's actually a boot up time. So if you wanna quickly switch from photo to video, it's gonna take a little bit of time in between those. So you might be wondering, why would I care about hybrid capabilities, being able to take pictures with a cinema camera? Well, I mean, yeah, obviously I'm best known for my cinematography, but a lot of people forget that they tried to give me a Pulitzer Prize for photojournalism, but, you know, I wouldn't accept it because there were a lot of other people who really needed the confidence boost that that award could give them, and I'm already, as you know, very, very confident. I mean, basically, it is a Canon R5 without IBIS in it. If you're curious about the photo capabilities, you could watch DP Review TV did like this video review. I couldn't sit through the whole thing. It was way too tedious, but you can go watch their episode about the R5, basically find out how this functions as a photo camera. So if you are shooting video, what are the advantages of the R5C over the regular R5? Well, first of all, the reason that this body is quite a bit bulkier is because you can see we get a fan on it. So those overheating issues are a thing of the past, unlimited record time in any of your video record modes. Not only that, but we now get the assist tools that Canons have been lacking. We get waveforms, we get false color on this, and very importantly, that waveform doesn't disappear when you start recording. As well, we can now actually punch in and check our focus while we're recording with this camera. We also get the ability to upload our own custom LUTs while you're working with this for when you're shooting C-Log3. You know who uses shutter speed when they're shooting videos? Amateurs. That's why the R5C gives you the ability to use shutter angle like a pro. As well, the R5C gives you the hot shoe that'll support four channel recording with a separate Tascam accessory, but also all of Canon's new audio accessories. So yeah, there's a lot of advantages if you're planning to use this to shoot video, but there are some drawbacks as well. As I mentioned previously, this camera doesn't have any in-body image stabilization. Now, that's gonna be a big drawback for photographers like Chris. I mean, for video, you know, I got the hands of a sniper who practices surgery on his days off, so it's not that big a limitation for me. And also remember, on all the Canon bodies with in-body image stabilization, if you're using even a moderate wide angle, you get that horrible wobble at the edge of the frame. I just disabled the IBIS anyway, so it's not really that big a loss. Now one absolutely baffling decision that Canon's made is this doesn't have any kind of digital horizon level, and with my expert eyes right now, I can see that our horizon looks like slightly skewed. Chris? 
Yes, it is terrible. I am grossly incompetent and I'm sorry. I sure wish you could be behind the camera right now, Gordon. I mean, I've complained before that the R5, as soon as you hit record, you would lose the horizon, but at least it had a horizon when you were setting up their shot. This is an egregious omission. Chris, fix it. Yes, Gordon, I will do my best. Tell me when it's level. That looks good to my trained eyes. You're the best. But my biggest issue with this camera is that in exchange for all those great video features, it has absolutely destroyed the battery life on this camera. I mean, you're lucky to get like a half hour of actual working time out of these batteries on it. And yes, I know on a big fancy set like the ones I generally work on, you're gonna be able to use V-mount batteries or hook it into a USB power bank. But a big part of the appeal of this is you might want a very small cinema camera so it sucks, you're constantly flipping batteries around. I wish they'd move to a bigger power supply with this. Now my uh, focus pulling skills are incredible, so I never use it, but autofocus can be useful for some other people. And this camera's really interesting because it doesn't have quite as sophisticated an autofocus system as the Canon R5. The R5 can do animal detect, animal eye detect. That's not available on the R5C. The interface is much more like, say, a C70. But one cool feature that it does have is the ability to detect humans only. And that means it's not going to jump focus to the background if it loses a person for a second. It's just gonna keep the focus where it was before. This is a really useful tool and it's bizarre. They haven't added that in firmware to the R5. So if you're mostly filming people, this is actually a much more dependable autofocuser. But if you want to shoot animals, you got to pony up for the other camera. It's kind of weird. Now, when I test a camera, I go through every last one of the picture profiles and record modes because I take this seriously. Let's talk about what I've discovered. First of all, when you're recording raw video with this camera, it records a different format completely than the R5. This records cinema raw light, not raw light. Lower data rates, so that makes recording and using raw video actually quite a bit more usable on the R5C. Now because they put the big ass fan in the R5C, that means we can actually do some high speed recording while filming in our raw capture. So using a Super 16 crop, we can actually get to 120 frame per second raw video. With 4K and 8K, we can get up to 60 frames per second. Problem there is, it draws too much power for these batteries to provide. So you have to plug the camera into external power or none of that power is gonna go to the lens. Now that might sound like, oh, you'll just lose autofocus, but with all of these RF lenses that Canon's brought out lately, the power is for the manual focus ring, the aperture ring, the stabilization. Effectively, these lenses won't work at all. So if you wanna use those record modes, you either have to plug the camera into power or use like an actual mechanical cinema lens. Now, if you're not shooting raw video, your only log option for a little more flexibility is Canon C-Log3 profile. Now, I'm a professional cinematographer. I don't grade my own stuff. I pass that on to professional colorists. I mean, honestly, the only people who still grade their footage is like YouTubers and wedding shooters. Hey, you're supposed to be trying to be nicer here, Gordon, okay? Okay, no, 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 hang on. I do not want to be dismissive to wedding videographers. They are doing a great job. So. When you're shooting in this C-Log3, I mean, I find, and a lot of people find, it's just kind of a real pain to work with that format. You tend to lose quite a bit of color information in the highlights. What I do really like is, if you're not gonna grade heavily, this gives you the wide DR profile, which is not a log profile, very easy to edit, and does give you more expansive dynamic range than using like the neutral profiles that you'd find on the Canon R5. This is a great profile. I think it's Canon's best straight out of camera profile, and it's only available in their cinema series. Now the original Canon R5 had an interesting trick where you could record your 4K video in the HQ mode and this would take 8K capture and use that to create an oversampled 4K image which gave you much more detail, better low light performance than its subsampled 4K video that it defaulted to. The problem with that mode was it constantly caused the Canon R5 to overheat. Now with the R5C, we've got a fan built onto it so it always captures in that oversampled 4K mode by default. The problem is there's no option to actually select subsampled 4K. And you would think, why would I ever want lesser 4K? Well, the nice thing is the subsampled 4K had much faster readout because it was line skipping or binning in that mode, where the HQ had quite a bit more rolling shutter. So this means if you're shooting in 4K, you're always gonna have a fair amount of rolling shutter on this camera. Okay, so if you want to do some high-speed 4K recording, the original R5 did give you the option to do 4K 120, 
but it was using it all with intra-frame recording. So the file sizes were absolutely mammoth with that. And it did, of course, because it's the R5, caused the camera to overheat. With the R5C, you do still have that 4K 120 ability, but now you have the option to do it with inter-frame recording. So the file sizes are a lot more manageable and it makes the 4K 120 actually really usable on this. And making the slow motion recording even more usable is now if you wanna record your slow motion video to the CF Express card, you can also have an audio file recorded separately to the SD card. So you can capture audio even while recording 4K 120 in camera, it'll play back in slow motion, but you know you've still got the audio. Okay, so who is the R5C4? Well, really, I think you can just look at the features that this offers you and some of the compromises and decide if this is gonna be right for the kind of shooting that you do. But I really see this camera as kind of a crossroads camera for Canon. Okay, so if you're looking at Canon cinema cameras in this range, you're probably comparing this to the C70, a dedicated video camera, and they both have their strengths, and I love the sensor on the C70. It gives you the ability to record C-Log2, which is a profile that I far prefer working with, to the C-Log3 that the R5C offers. But remember, that is a crop sensor camera with an RF mount, and pretty much all of the RF glass that's coming out is designed for a full-frame camera like the one on the EOS R5C. Now, as well, this has an electronic viewfinder, and I do love working with that if you're like me or my idiot twin brother Jordan, then that's also gonna seal the deal in terms of the R5C. I do like that Canon is giving you either option now. If you want the hybrid body, you have an option, or if you want a dedicated cinema camera in the same kind of price range. Well, I know you guys got a lot of useful information out of this because it was expertly presented by me, Gordon, but you should definitely, I don't know, should you subscribe to the channel? It's just gonna be more of Chris and Jordan's bull next week. I guess you could look at, well, they have like their socials down below if you wanted to see some really uninspiring opinions or photography. Uh, you know, the comments is a great place to leave your opinions. If they line up with mine, then they are definitely accurate. And you know, no need to thank me. I know how much you appreciate me coming on this. Oh, shh. hang on one sec. Oh, Michael Bay needs me. Ambulance too? Sure.